your support uh, for supporting the DEF CON community and the Red Team Village specifically. We're looking forward to your presentation, so take it away. Thank you so much, Omar, for uh, introducing and having me here. Let me just share the screen and uh, confirm. Uh, yeah, can you see the screen? Yes, you're all set. Awesome, perfect. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining me. And uh, first of all, uh, to just give some context, uh, thank you so much, uh, Def Conrad team, uh, village, especially in this pandemic times, to make it virtual and uh, people can enjoy these talks uh, without any physical intervention. And uh, this talk is uh, about the Kubernetes code. So uh, disclaimer, basically, today we will not see any slides, basically. And it's mostly everything is in online. You can play along with me, or if you can go back and try yourself, you can go ahead and try as well. So there will be no slides, uh, mostly live demos and uh, the hands-on exercises. Cool. So this talk is primarily focusing on introducing a project recently I have created called uh, Kubernetes Code, uh, which is uh, this uh, this is at uh, in GitHub dot Kubernetes Code. This project was mainly intentionally vulnerable application, which is to basically try and uh, teach uh, participants or uh, like anyone come to the new to Kubernetes to understand how you can assess these Kubernetes clusters and find vulnerabilities so that you can go back and write out in your organizations or day to day pen tests, which you find are team exercises. Right. So I have presented uh, at some of the places and also I have created a playground if you wanted to write now, write in your browser and uh, follow along. So a little bit about me, uh, myself, Madhu Akula. I work at currently Zibia as a cloud native security specialist. And I have been uh, speaking and training at a bunch of conferences around the world, like DEF CON, Black Hat, Usenix, Orally, and some of them. And uh, I'm fortunate to find some of the vulnerabilities long back uh, using my research in uh, some of the organizations like uh, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Google, and some of them. So apart from that, I, my primary interest mostly working around uh, security of cloud, uh, containers, Kubernetes, and uh, automating the infrastructure part. So that's a uh, little bit about me. If you wanted to follow me, you can follow me at Madhu Akula in most of the social media stuff. Cool. Let's get into what exactly is this Kubernetes code and uh, what we are trying to learn like within this next one hour, right? So to give a little context uh, about Kubernetes code, so as I said, it is intentionally vulnerable. I think as most of you have come across the different types of good like web code or Terra code or some other goods. So this is a similar project, but it is mostly focusing on Kubernetes to understand what are the known vulnerabilities. And also we have seen common vulnerabilities in the real world environments, like while performing penetration testing or like while performing assessments in Kubernetes environments. Uh, from those we have taken as a scenarios and uh, these are the some of the scenarios. Let me zoom a bit. I think uh, maybe easier to see. Yeah. So these are the some of the scenarios I have created, and uh, uh, we will see some of the scenarios exploitation and how you can bypass or gain access to Kubernetes clusters uh, as an attacker point of view. Right. And uh, I'm really sorry and I'm shameful. <laughs> I said I will keep update this uh, slides or the uh, the documentation. And also I have been working on the uh, defense part also. Hopefully this month we will see them coming away. Uh, this part I'm going to skip. Uh, so before diving into Kubernetes, uh, if you are really completely new and coming to the containers or Kubernetes world, I highly recommend understanding the technology because there is a fair amount of gap in between uh, penetration testing or uh, finding or assessing clusters uh, if you don't understand what technology you are doing, right? So we have seen commonly, especially in the, in the modern tech infrastructure world, uh, there is a huge gap for the security team to understand the technology before uh, uh, even testing or trying out. Because once you able to understand, you can able to give your best or you can able to possibly find most of the out of uh, the, the Kubernetes or any ecosystem. Uh, this is a very funny video and uh, it's a, a simple children's guide to explain what exactly Kubernetes is. So I would highly recommend if you want to uh, go through these uh, things. So to give you a little quick context, uh, how Kubernetes architecture looks like at a higher level, right? So this is taken from the, the wiki commons. Uh, you see a server uh, and client architecture uh, similar to most of the uh, server client. So one thing you have to observe here is in Kubernetes, everything which you make, any operation, it may be from the within the master, uh, which means server, 
uh, within the node, which means worker node. So we, whatever the operations which will make, like it can be from the node, it can be from the developer or any user, any service will go and touch the something called API server. So which is one of the key component in terms of Kubernetes because Kubernetes is completely driven by API first approach. So whatever you make call request or something, everything you will see uh, going through the API server, right? And control manager is basically to make the decisions, uh, whatever the requests you make. And scheduler is ensuring uh, to place the, the workloads or the, 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 uh, the request which you made. Suppose if you wanted to serve an Nginx server with 10 pods, it will ensure that how many nodes has the capacity to schedule. So the scheduler job is to figure out that and uh, place them accordingly. So etcd is one of the key values to database, uh, which is used by Kubernetes, which is as its name suggests key value. So it stores the, the, the data which is coming uh, uh, to the API server and uh, stores the key value page. And uh, we will see a little uh, bit in a later uh, coming sections. So apart from that nodes, when you come to the node, kubelet is the, the, the talking point to the uh, API server and communicates within the local uh, node itself. So whenever you wanted to make a request uh, uh, as a scheduler, wanted to schedule in the node, it will talk to the container runtime, which is within the node, like it can be Docker, Run C, or uh, XLG. Uh, so then um, uh, it will go ahead and schedule based on the, the workload uh, kind of thing. So skew proxy is one of the another key component, which is kind of like IP tables, like it will try to provide a communication uh, across like the nodes as well as a cluster. So let's go ahead and a uh, little bit go deep, uh, but uh, I would highly recommend you practice the Kubernetes before you diving into the, the, the assessments or security testing, right? So here are the, some of the references I have curated. These are pretty hands-on, like if you wanted to try, so you can go ahead and try as a, like a literally playground and uh, also specific objects if you start while testing, uh, you can click and understand what exactly it is. Uh, so these references I would, uh, I think it would be definitely helpful to try it. Cool. Uh, setting up Kubernetes code. Uh, the Kubernetes code is in designed in such a way it can set up any out of the box. It can be in your existing cloud provider services like GKE, EKS, AKS, or DigitalOcean based. And also your locally provisioned Minikube or another playground. To make easy of setup for the people to try out and learn, I have created something called Katakoda Playground. If you just go ahead and click this, it will open up a playground for you, which is uh, completely free and online. So you don't need anything to be done. I think you have to register first time. So then you can get the complete setup here for you uh, to practice and learn. So let me put it in a presentation mode so that you can see a little better. Yep. Cool. cool. So I'll walk you through how you can set this up and practice. And uh, if you wanted to follow along with me, you can follow this guide at maduakla.com slash Kubernetes code. Uh, this is the URL, right? Cool. And if you wanted to set up your own, uh, you can just uh, follow this uh, uh, the, the uh, documentation. Basically, you need to have a working Kubernetes cluster setup with admin access. And also you need a Helm version too, because in one of the scenario, we will try to focus on how you can exploit the existing vulnerability in the older version of Helm, right? So that's it. So if you wanted to set up your own, uh, let's go ahead and do that as well. So if you have your own set cluster, you clone the repository, which is uh, the Git clone of the, the Kubernetes uh, good. And uh, then you can go ahead and uh, set up the Kubernetes code, right? So, it checks if Kubernetes kubectl is available, Helm 2 is available in your path, and it will go ahead and uh, deploy the tiller, which is the server side component of the Helm, and a bunch of vulnerable services, which will be used as practice to uh, uh, exploit or uh, try practicing uh, Kubernetes security assessments. Right. So if you are someone following the, the, the Katakoda live, you can use this playground, which is uh, completely free and online. You can go ahead and do the same thing uh, in, the, in the playground as well. So the playground is designed in such a way, you can go ahead and see here only the guide in the second, in the specific tab. And also you can uh, browse those ports and other stuff uh, within the, the browser itself. Even in your mobile also, you can try this. Right? So it takes a while uh, to set up the, uh, the entire Kubernetes code uh, platform. I think uh, it's almost done. So it creates a bunch of uh, uh, vulnerable scenarios, uh, which I have pre-created. Uh, pre uh, you can go through the code and you can able to see what exactly it is trying to do uh, if you wanted to look at it. Right? 
So this is nothing but it checks uh, if kubectl is existing or Helm to existing, and it sets a bunch of uh, MLs, like which is nothing but deployments uh, in the cluster. Cool. Now we have the, the cluster up and running, and we have Kubernetes code setup. So what's next, right? So I think looks like here also it is done. Uh, ensure you check all the pods are running. Uh, you can go ahead and run kubectl get pods. Uh, it is currently container creating, which means it's starting. Uh, it takes a while to set up the, uh, depends on the way you are running the, uh, the Kubernetes cluster, right? So let me go ahead and do this as well here, kubectl get pods. I hope you people can see the screen. I think let me zoom a little bit as well. Cool. So you can see a bunch of them. Most of the pods are created. I think just only one pod is uh, waiting to get created. Uh, that's awesome. Now you can see all pods are running and uh, I think this is intentional. Uh, this is a job and uh, get complete. So if you see the status, uh, basically your entire Kubernetes code is uh, set up and running. So now it's time to hack and get into the cluster. Right. Cool. That's where we go back and refer to the documentation. So if you look at the scenarios, so there are a bunch of scenarios uh, we have created, as I said. So for the time being, uh, for the entire today's presentation, we will not be able to look at all of those scenarios, but uh, definitely we will be looking at some of the primary scenarios, uh, which might be interesting and fun to try out. And uh, I would highly recommend go back and try out yourself and uh, check out more other scenarios as well. Right? And uh, in some cases, especially uh, not all of them scenarios, but in some scenarios, I try to create a flag in this format, ks go dash go and uh, some num uh, the md5 is basically it's a number of uh, uh, 32 characters i think then if you reach this kind of uh, flag basically it means end of the scenarios uh, but it may not be found in for all the scenarios but i try to keep for uh, certain scenarios to uh, reduce the, the effort of like going on beyond post exploitation cool so let's go ahead and start with the scenario one, uh, sensitive keys in code base. Uh, so I would recommend before doing that, I think if you are setting up locally uh, or in the same place, uh, all ports are running, make sure you run bash access Kubernetes code. What it does is basically it port forward all the ports or services uh, into your local system so that you can access locally without even exposing to the world, uh, which is internet, uh, right? So now if you go ahead and click this, uh, basically you can see the homepage, like which is the Kubernetes code homepage, right? So this is where you can see Kubernetes code is running. You can follow the guide here. Uh, and also if you wanted to check out each scenario, the scenarios are here. So let's get started with the first scenario, uh, which we will look at. Uh, one of them is called sensitive keys in code bases. So the Kubernetes code is designed in such a way, if you wanted to practice as an attacker or learner, you can go ahead and try this scenario by clicking here and uh, starting with attacking. Or if you are someone who wanted to learn and practice yourself and follow some kind of guide, we have created the documentation. The solutions will be here in the same guide uh, where, uh, for each scenario, uh, like you can follow them as well here if you're stuck somewhere. And some scenarios, we try to create uh, two different methodologies. It can be attacked in different ways. So we try to document in the, the same way. So if you see here, uh, let's go back and read a little bit about the scenario. Uh, developers tend to commit sensitive information to version control systems. As we are moving towards the ACD and GitOps systems, we tend to forget identifying sensitive information in code and commits. Let's see what we, if we can find something cool here, right? So by looking at, uh, you can see that uh, some kind of uh, vulnerability or some kind of mistake has happened. Uh, now, as you can read this, this is version control using Git. So what I can do is I can try as dot Git and you can see the default file in the Git will be config. Now you can see that there is a bare repository hanging there, right? And uh, by the way, these vulnerabilities, which you see, uh, I was showing like in the web vulnerabilities, these are just an entry points into getting into the cluster. Uh, in real world, it may not be the same vulnerabilities you find. Uh, maybe there is a different approach you find to get it here. Right? Uh, that's the thing. So now I can see that there is a git config. Let's go ahead and see how I can clone this repository locally so that I can understand this code base better. Right? So if you want to start, basically you can go back and follow this uh, repository here. So there is a tool called Git Dumper. It can be any other tool as well. I just take an example. 
So you can try this tool uh, by running uh, Python 3 git dumper local host and save it like this. Maybe I think I have spawned figure here. Cool. Uh, git dumper. So what I'm trying to do is I'm cloning the local host 1230 .git folder into local system. So what it is trying is it is going to fetch all the, the, the repository and uh, clone it locally, right? So now if you go here, uh, KTS code, git. So this is the git repository which we have. So if you see here, uh, we can see there is a Golang bunch of files, main.go and a bunch of custom code, right? And also you can see git uh, the folder. So you can also look for what are the old commits which are happened, right? As the developers sometimes make mistake, it, by the way, this scenario is not only focused towards containers or Kubernetes. In general, world we have seen these kind of mistakes in uh, in most of the modern software development especially in cloud deployments or any uh, internal deployments as well right so i can see some of the bunch of commits uh, as you attacker you can go and check manually like git check out to specific uh, uh, the log or check commit and also you can see oh you uh, you can see an interesting file called env right so there you go. So you can see there is a, the, the access key and secret key for the AWS has mistakenly committed. And uh, you can also see there is a, uh, the KTS code flag is there. So basically this means that you have reached the end of this scenario, but uh, in real world, you can use this AWS access key, secret key and get the uh, session token and you can do post exploitation and uh, go along uh, beyond it. So these scenarios are just, we have taken from uh, what we see in real world as a pen testing engagement and some of them are like uh, in a common uh, scenarios which we see uh, in real world right so th th this may not be possible and uh, this may be possible in different use cases so feel free to give it a try and uh, understand what exactly we are trying to achieve here so basically what will happen is in the same uh, use case so we can try in different method like what i'm trying to do is most of the time developers mistakenly build a docker images which may be uh, uh, committed with the dot git files because they don't ignore these files uh, when it is creating into a Docker container, maybe Docker ignore or something. So which might end up uh, uh, pushing this data into the, in the containers as well. So looking at these kinds of sensitive information uh, is very useful uh, in the container. Like the another methodology you can try, as I said, explanation. So you can get the pod name, you can exec into the pod. Uh, this is like another method. Now we can also use tools like Truffle Hog. So Truffle Hog, I think most of you know, uh, this is a, a tool which is basically finds high entropy or sensitive secrets in a Git repositories. So now I am trying to do Truffle Hog, and given the current is the current directory is the where Git repository is there. So what it does is it will check through all the commits and finds is there any high entropy values uh, or like sensitive secrets uh, found based on the regular expressions and uh, return to the, the STDO. Right? So you can include these kind of tools in your CI CD systems to detect these kind of vulnerabilities. But in attacker's point of view, if you find any of the code bases which has Git or something, maybe it's a really definitely good way to check out in a, especially the, the container environments, you might end up finding some kind of sensitive information. Like you can see the same thing. Cool. So this is our uh, first scenario, uh, which we just tried uh, from the, the Kubernetes code. And uh, similarly, as I said, you can try out here as well. So what you can do is you can look at here. And uh, if you wanted to specifically browse specific port, like 1230, in the custom port tab, you can just open in a new browser window also. If you press this icon, then you can just say, I wanted to browse 1230 port. So you can able to browse the same thing and uh, apply it in online yourself uh, for free and uh, understand what exactly uh, you can uh, assess or test for Kubernetes security, right? Cool. So that's kind of one of the simple scenario. So let's go ahead and uh, see what could be the some of the complex scenarios or uh, different kind of vulnerabilities uh, you see in Kubernetes uh, security assessment, right? So let's go back to the, the some maybe a uh, little down, uh, especially like attacking private registries or Kubernetes CS benchmarks or container escape, right? So let me go and showcase you how container escape to host system works. Uh, to browse to the scenario, basically you navigate here. So this is basically one of the pod. 
uh, inside Kubernetes cluster running uh, with uh, some specific privileged access has, right? So to set the context here, uh, most of the times, uh, especially operations teams may tend to require to run specific containers with high privileges, maybe giving capsis admin or host privileges or privilege uh, uh, context, which is uh, full admin, sysadmin capabilities. So these are things. And uh, also to just give an example, how we found in a real world, I have seen, especially while we performing a penetration testing engagement, so most of the developers uh, get an access to completely one namespace with a full privilege. So if your clusters doesn't have a PSPs, which is nothing but port security policies, uh, developers can basically has full access to that namespace, whatever they can do, they can deploy a pod with uh, 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 specific privileges, which they can gain into the host system access, right? So also this is one of the use case we have taken to simulate or showcase how you can find uh, these kind of uh, container escape and gain access to the host system, right? Cool, so what we are trying to do here is uh, we can try and look for some bunch of information. Most of the time look for uh, print ENV. Sorry, I think I typed print. Oops. Cool. Uh, so most of the time you might uh, see some kind of stuff here as well in print ENV. And also I'm checking for mount. Is there any mounted directories? Now you can see there is a mounted directory for host from host system and uh, which is into the container which means basically in the pod in this Kubernetes case, right? So now what I can do is, uh, I think uh, let's look at what exactly the, the host system is doing. So if you see there is a host system mounted, like which is basically from the host system to just give an example. So which is nothing but uh, your underlying host system, which is node is mounted into your pod as a volume, right? So due to the reason we have extra capabilities, right? Like this container has a bunch of extra capabilities as well. So using those capabilities as an attacker, what we can do is uh, we can like try to gain some kind of access into host system. What you can do is we can sage root on the host system because we have capability of the privilege. And now we can see that it is given that the, the host system sage root and now what we can do is we can perform the internal commands which are specific to system, right? Like now you can see Docker PS. So these are nothing but running inside the host system, which is not a container. So you went below one level from the pod uh, to the host system. From there, you are executing commands, right? So uh, the, the possible uh, attack surface here you can do is uh, to do post exploitation might be basically using the, the host system configuration, which is nothing but node level uh, Kubernetes configuration uh, to go and uh, try attacking other nodes or to gain access to other nodes, uh, which basically you controlling the entire cluster by passing through, passing through, right? So for example, what you can do is uh, you can use the configuration of node, which is uh, available in the cat var lib. Let me do cat var lib. So you can uh, use the configuration of cat var lib quip config, which has the node level configuration. So you can use that configuration and perform the, the Kubernetes commands, which is not only available for the existing namespace specific, it can also perform at uh, the node level, uh, whatever the node has the, uh, the service account, you can able to do that level. Uh, to do that, for example, you can do this command. Oops. Yeah. A oh, kubectl command is not available. Let's download kubectl. Uh, let me download this kubectl here. Uh, it just takes some time. Hopefully it is faster. <laughs> yeah. Yep, there you go. So what we are trying to do is uh, we are using now a uh, kubectl command and passing the Cube config flag, which is using the node configuration and getting all, like whatever the all resources in namespace of cube system, right? Oops, I'm trying the same thing again. I have to do chmod plus x. 
Cool. Now you can see when I run kubectl cube config uh, with the specific configuration and uh, get all in cube system, it will go ahead and execute that command and uh, get all the resources. Now you can see here, uh, it can able to get all the pods which are not restricted to specific namespace, which is the developer or uh, the user has. And uh, you can able to explore more, uh, access more resources and also services. And uh, you can see some of the, the specific use cases, especially I think uh, replication controllers and uh, other jobs and secrets you cannot able to access. So the node, whatever the access it has, the node configuration, you can able to perform same level. So as an attacker, you can do post exploitation, basically deploy the another pod uh, in a different node and uh, you can able to pass uh, to the another node and again get access to that. So for that, you can just look for how many nodes you have uh, like currently two nodes, maybe you are in this node, then you can deploy another pod in the, the different node and get again access to the different. Node. So you can basically uh, use this kind of uh, hopping methodology and hop onto another node and uh, gain complete cluster access. So this uh, is mostly you will see if an organization or the, the company which is not running up uh, the pod security policies, you can able to perform these kind of uh, uh, attacks or uh, the uh, escalations of the container escapes. Right? So you might uh, use uh, PSPs as a defense for these kind of vulnerabilities and uh, it would be an easy and uh, simple way to fix uh, these kind of uh, exploitation. Right? Cool. So let's go ahead and see another uh, use case. I think we have some more time to see two other scenarios. Let's take an example of Kubernetes namespace by pass. Okay. I'm going here, Kubernetes namespace uh, by pass. I don't know exactly. Yeah. So by default, Kubernetes uses flat networking scheme. I think this is uh, one of the, the, the default feature of Kubernetes. So by default, Kubernetes uses flat networking scheme means I can able to talk to from any part to any part by default. There is no firewall rules which will happen allow or deny. By default, anything can talk to anything within the, the cluster IP range, right? So which means that whenever someone, uh, sorry, or ops team or like uh, security people says that there is a namespace we have created in the Kubernetes, which means it's just a logical boundary. There is no way you literally segregating uh, between the, the different namespace unless until apply some kind of uh, security policies like NSPs and network security policies, right? So if if you are testing a, a Kubernetes clusters where there was no NSPs and there was no restrictions between the namespace, as attacker, you can able to talk to other namespaces and other services within the cluster uh, by using a standard network security tools like which we use day to day, like Nmap or uh, the, like Zmap or a bunch of tools, right? So to just uh, get started with the scenario, I have created something, uh, an example. So what we are trying to do is we are running something called hacker container, which has uh, again created by me. I have while performing a bunch of Kubernetes security testings, I thought that there are so many tools we require, especially focused on container environment. So I have created curated list of tools, which are maybe 50 plus tools, which will help you aid in while performing Kubernetes security assessments. So this container has those all tools, like while you are performing Kubernetes security assessment, and you can use this as a, like a Swiss army knife uh, in security assessment, right? And I have seen this has been very valuable while performing assessment. So definitely I'll try to create some kind of documentation out of it. Maybe hopefully you can go back and try out uh, different use cases with the uh, hacker container. I think it's going and deploying there and cool. So we got a shell. So what we are doing is we are inside a pod uh, in a, one of the default namespace. Like if you wanted to just see, uh, let's go ahead and run some command called kubectl get pods. Now you can see hacker container, which is running in a default namespace. And uh, let's go ahead and see what else we can do from the, the shell, right? So as attacker, you are in uh, one of the pod and you don't know what else you can do from there. So as I said, Hacker Container has a bunch of tools like Docker Bench, Security, Cube Bench, Linus, and a bunch of other tools. So one interesting thing uh, you can do especially is uh, looking for the, the entire cluster range. As I said, by default, Kubernetes uses flat networking scheme. You can look at the entire cluster range, right? So you can do IP route. You can see this is using 10 dot slash eight network range. And also you can look for what is the current IP address and 10.0.0.12. So you can scan the entire network and identify services. 
So one thing I can confirm, or I can assure is uh, most of the times uh, internally within the cluster as a microservices or services which are running, many of the, the developers or operations teams tend to forget or assume that it is only exposed to internal networks. They will never use authentications or authorizations and you might end up uh, seeing some kind of bypasses which is uh, exposed internally itself, especially Mongo services, Elasticsearch uh, instances, and also even some microservices because the API gateway terminates at the ingress level, uh, which means before exposing into the world, like using load balancers, they will terminate at the ingress level. So you might end up seeing some kind of services, especially the, the, the application services also don't have authentication authorization checks within the clusters, right? So this is a really uh, great place to explore and uh, do as much recon you can do, and you can gain as much as uh, sensitive information or services access. Cool. So what I'm trying to do is uh, here I'm exploring same and what I did is I'm trying to use Zmap, which is uh, uh, similar to Nmap. It's trying to do a scan for the entire cluster range, which is uh, to do a foster way. And uh, I'm specifically looking for a port of 6379, which is a Redis instance. So I assume that there might be a Redis running or like a 9200 you can also try, which is uh, Elasticsearch or Mongo or MySQL or any other services you can scan. It's like traditional security will apply here, right? Let's go ahead and run this uh, Zmap and see what we can see. So, oops, okay. So we have to have enable the internal network range uh, allow within this list. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, let's comment this and run again. Sorry. Oh, okay. You have to do another thing, which is specify the gateway where this GMAP is starting. Let's go ahead and do that as well. Uh, F1 G capital. Okay. And what is the gateway? Yeah, this is the MAC address. Cool. So, yeah. So what it is doing, it is trying to scan the entire cluster range uh, for the specific port 6379 and uh, results the output if any of the, the IP is uh, running or service is running or pod is running with the specific port open, it will save into the, the results.csv. It take a while. I think uh, it's pretty fast <laughs> but uh, in this case, but uh, th this will take some more time to go through and scan it. But uh, as I said, in general, we have seen uh, in real world a lot of services running, especially Elasticsearch instances, where you can uh, look for uh, without authentication and uh, where you can gain access to indices and the log information, uh, especially audit logs and sensitive information, and also Mongo instances without any authentication or also the microservices, right? So this is a pretty gold mine if you are inside a pod and uh, without NSPs, network security policies applied within the cluster, right? Cool. So this will take a while. I think 76% and all stuff. Yeah. As I said, uh, similarly, you can try out those uh, vulnerabilities here and uh, follow the guide if you wanted to do as well. And uh, I think it's a, it's a simple way to try out this entire Katakoda uh, environment within the browser. You don't need to set up the entire uh, the cluster itself uh, locally. And also once you are done, you can just quit the browser. It's all done. Like you don't need to clean up the entire environment or uh, set up. And uh, another disclaimer, I think I forgot to mention in the beginning, do not try to run or set up this Kubernetes code in your production environments or in your office, uh, because it has uh, 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 intentionally vulnerabilities uh, introduced due to the application flaws or something. It is uh, a vulnerable application which may have uh, gained access to your uh, production or wherever you run these environments. And uh, at least I try to take care using exposing the ports within to the local host, but uh, it's highly not recommended to run in uh, production environments. Cool. We have Zmap completed. Let's go ahead and see what we got from the results. You can see that there is a the, the IP which has a 6379 port is exposed within the cluster. And uh, let's go ahead and see what we can get out of it. As you know, it's Redis. I, as I said, uh, this uh, the hacker container has built-in tools to look for these kind of common uh, attacks and all stuff. We can use Redis CLI and I uh, forgot to be honest how to access. <laughs> Yeah, iPhone H and the IP. And uh, now you can see there is an authenticated Redis uh, running within the, the cluster. You can able to access uh, because there is no network security policies applied, which is by default in the cluster. 
uh, means you can able to access without any uh, uh, issues. I mean, so they don't have any allow list or denial list uh, within the cluster. Right? Now you can do enumeration standard like get key. Uh, you can see nothing. Okay, keys. You can see the keys what are available, and you can see there is a key and uh, get secret stuff. Cool. So you reach the flag. That means you are done with the challenge, right? So this is just a, an example of try to simulate the scenarios, but uh, definitely you see these kind of vulnerabilities in uh, real world. Uh, once you end up in a port, try to look out for uh, more services and uh, try as much as recon, and you will get most information out of it. Fine. Cool. So let's go back and see another scenario before we conclude the presentation and moving into the next sections. Let's look at one of the common uh, oldest uh, the vulnerabilities which we have seen uh, exploiting the Helm or Tiller. So Helm is like a package manager for Kubernetes. So how we deploy application, uh, install applications into suppose you are using Debian based apt get install the package name. Similarly, uh, developers or operations teams use Helm, which is a package manager to deploy applications into Kubernetes, right? So they will just do Helm install and the Nginx, it will go and install the Nginx within the cluster, right? So uh, by default, if you, uh, uh, if you are testing any cluster and which is using version two, which is the older version of Helm, and uh, it used to be by default, most people using is Helm two in a previous cases, but they have raised uh, three recently, like some months back. So by default, Helm version two has uh, RBAC setup with the full cluster admin access. So if you end up seeing these kind of Helm 2 configurations uh, running within the cluster and there are no network security policies applied and it is running with the default setup, basically using this misconfiguration as an attacker, you can get entire cluster admin access and pawn the entire cluster, right? Let's go ahead and see how this scenario looks like. I'm going and running uh, a simple pod and uh, executing into that, right? Cool. Let's go ahead and run this command. It will go ahead and uh, spin up another pod, uh, KTS code Helm Tiller, and give you a bash access. Right. Yep. So now we are inside a pod, and uh, we assume that this cluster has Helm installed, and uh, we wanted to see how we can exploit this kind of vulnerability in a in a real world environment, right? So let's go back to our documentation, right? So by default, uh, in Kubernetes, uh, there is a schema which they follow to access our, uh, our basically it's like a DNS. Uh, similarly, how we use, they use uh, uh, in the Kubernetes. So this is nothing but a service name. This is the namespace and they use either a service name and namespace and a cluster dot local. So this is how the, the structure which is followed, right? So by default, if you have installed uh, the Helm, which is pillar is get deployed in version two, which is nothing but a server side component of Helm. Helm is uh, the, the client side version where you do Helm install or something. So the pillar is the server side component, which has a full cluster admin access, right? So now we are doing pillar deploy is the service name and uh, it is by default deploys in a cube system. So I'm trying to look for cube system and I'm checking Telnet uh, and see if this port is uh, able to access from the current port. So this is the default port, which is uh, in a by default configurations exposed to 0.0.0, .0 which means if you are in any one of the pod within the cluster, you can able to access the Tiller deployment uh, service, right? You can see, it looks like you can able to access the uh, Tiller. So which means you can able to talk to the Tiller deployment service because there were no NSPs and by default it is exposed to 0.0.0, .0 which is uh, within the cluster, right? And uh, let's see what we can do. So uh, I have also installed Helm uh, within this uh, same container to talk to the Helm. So in the Helm uh, version two, you can specify the dash dash host flag, which means you can specify which uh, Tiller service you wanted to talk to. Now we know the Tiller service uh, name as well as the, the DNS basically, and uh, we are specifying talk to this host and uh, perform these operations, right? Let's go ahead and run this uh, command. Uh oh yeah uh i'm trying to run helm command and specifying the specific service and uh, the port and i'm just running helm version command right now you can see 
the client version which is helm is uh, 2.16.7 and the, the server version which is stellar is 2.16.9 so i can able to talk to the helm service and i can also see what all charts deployed helm charts right helm ls like you can see metadata db is deployed so you can create your own chart and apply as well right so what uh, we have done is as attacker simply to showcase uh, the complexity or what you can do as an attacker uh, let's go ahead and run a simple command by default kubernetes stores uh, uh, has a service account which is stored in var lib service secret var one yeah secrets kubernetes io service account namespace because i am running in default namespace and uh, this is the uh, token for that uh, specific service account which is mapped to the current pod so what i am trying to do now here is uh, we have created a helm chart which is spawn chart and this i have taken uh, from the the bitnami repository research and i have comp the, the given the uh, reference here you can go and check more resources what it does is basically uh, it's a simple helm chart what it is do is uh, it has bunch of values which is nothing but namespace is default and the name of the the is default let's look at the templates how it looks like templates and a cluster role so it has a cluster role which is nothing but uh, it gives all api groups in the kubernetes for all the resources and all the verbs which means you can do get post delete list all of the resources for any of the resources in the kubernetes cluster any of the kind of api groups uh, you can perform right so what we are trying to do is uh, templates cluster role binding so we are trying to bind this cluster role which is entered across the cluster uh, to the service account which is taken if you seen uh, which is namespace is default because we are in the this pod is currently running in the default namespace and the service account is default because you see here it's uh, the service account is default when you do uh, slash var run a uh, uh, secret service account so what we are trying to do is we are creating a new cluster role which gives full cluster access to perform anything on the all resources and binding that cluster role to the default service account so now as you can't get the secrets or any operations within the cluster using the default account once we deploy this helm chart you can do anything as a cluster admin right let's go ahead and run this uh, uh, deploy this helm chart so we are trying to do helm and we are using the same tiller configuration and deploying the pawn chart right let's go ahead and run so it went ahead and deployed the pawn chart uh, because helm has the capability to talk to the tiller and tiller has the full cluster admin access so it can go ahead and deploy this chart so now if you go ahead and run kubectl get secrets you can able to get the secrets of the entire kubernetes here right so you can also get kubectl get pods you can able to get all the pods and in all namespaces as well right so basically you are full cluster admin access because currently whatever the service account which is there in the our uh, pod because due to the reason we have created a cluster role this cluster admin uh, sorry this uh, pod has basically full cluster admin access which can able to perform any kind of operations on all resources right so as attacker some of the useful commands uh, is like look for auth can i create pods you can check if the current service account which you own if you any time get a service account access it can able to create pods or something sorry create uh, you can also check uh, delete pods it can able to delete pods or something you can also specify can i do in namespace of cube system so this is talk to the api and give you the information so this uh, this command is pretty useful if you got a service account and you want to see what kind of privilege it has you can make these calls right and also some tips i don't know we are about to conclude and let me uh, whenever you make these commands you can also increase the verbosity of the the kubernetes you can increase the six or seven you can able to see each and every request it is making to the kubernetes cluster and uh, in a verbose way like if you increase this you can able to see much better uh, even like headers and if we increase like right like you can even see like a response body and everything and uh, if you increase to nine and uh, like little more depth it will keep going right so this is uh, completely api driven so you can able to play around uh, with the verbose and understand exactly each and every thing uh, which is being also and also very useful command is explain if you wanted to understand a pod then it will give you more details about it and i wanted to learn more about pod spec uh, you can also do kubectl spec 
so this is very handy and uh, while you are performing assessments you can quickly look at the documentation rather like uh, explain commands right cool so now you see as uh, due to the simple uh, default misconfiguration of our helm tiller we can able to control the entire cluster and uh, this vulnerability i have seen in so many of the cluster in real time uh, pen testing assessments due to the the administrator doesn't uh, configure properly and uh, this is default security installation by helm itself so the newer version of helm v3 uh, fixed this vulnerability so it kind of patched cool so let me go with the last scenario i think uh, then we kind of conclude and this you can try it's a dint docker in docker in exploitation this you commonly see commonly see in ci cd systems especially in build pipelines like gitlab ci cd or bitbucket ci cd or uh, in real world where they pass the socket docker socket right you can go ahead and try and ssr a vulnerability especially this is very widely exploited uh, in the cloud infrastructure but in coming to the kubernetes context it is little much you can get more out of it because as i said within the cluster there might not be some kind of services authenticated there might be services which are giving more health information of the nodes as well as the pods or internal services using ssrf you can get uh, more information out of it uh, within the clusters uh, compared to the, the cloud native uh, cloud way of uh, exploiting cool so let me go just uh, complete with the uh, oh, yeah this looks fun cool so this is the uh, use case where basically i'm trying to showcase uh, if you end up in any of the pod and the, the developer or operations teams didn't set up any resource consumptions like you can only consume these many resources right so you can able to use uh, utilities especially like i'm trying to showcase here stress ng so let me showcase simple example uh let me show in the terminal maybe uh, exit cube cutl get pods now you see bunch of pods are running so i am looking for specific pod let's look for the cube cutl top pod so when you do top it's basically a system like top command it shows how much uh, cpu resources and uh, memory resources it is uh, using and uh, if any of the deployment or manifest which doesn't have specifically resource limit set up and the cluster is deployed in like cloud infrastructure like which has auto scaling enabled if you hit this limit it will go and scale up a new node or it deploys like some more nodes uh, into the cluster right right so that times you can exploit this in a, in a attacker's point of view like let's go ahead and run a simple tool stress and i'm running with uh, two kicks and uh, 30 seconds and uh, so now you can see if you run the same command uh from the the specific resources of 3 mb 1 m 2 like increasing so much right i think it's just taking some time let's look keep looking you can see it hits a crazy amount of memory resource limits because there was no resource limit set for this uh, deployment uh whatever the hunger check which is we deployed as part of the kubernetes code attacker can basically consume more cpu resources and memory which basically cost the billing and uh, very uh, like cost effective for the the, uh, the company's perspective right billing and due to the reason uh, the most of the modern infrastructure is set up in such a way which is auto scalable and uh, uh, like scalable based on the certain uh, parameters so you can able to basically ddos or uh, gain more resource consumption for the the, the, the companies or organizations right so this is definitely one thing so before moving in uh, let me just conclude with the the hacker container preview as i said uh, hacker container let me just showcase maybe here hacker container so a hacker container is a similar another utility i created as part of the assessment so you can read more about it here the blog post so this has a bunch of utilities which you use day to day like uh, while performing assessments in the kubernetes cluster so i have used it extensively i would say uh, while performing assessment and it is very useful utility uh, let's go ahead and run uh, oops looks like it's already there let's exec into the pod uh, hacker container search cool so we are inside the pod uh, like you see bunch of other stuff like uh, default tools so some of the things like it has is ami contain so which is again utility written by jessica frozel she has done quite a lot of work for the, the containers and uh, security community in the 
Kubernetes and the container ecosystem. So what it does is it will try to identify what container runtime you are using and uh, do you have shared namespaces from the host system like PID user namespace or is there any app armor or seccom profile applied to the container to restrict certain capabilities and uh, is there what all capabilities allowed currently system calls allowed and it kind of a, a container introspection tool so which will help you to perform while uh, in attacks and uh, uh, security assessments so not only i think specific to the container or kubernetes generally it's a pretty useful tool uh, to try out right so you can also do the same thing uh, with proc self c group maybe yeah cool so you can see this is basically trying to figure out queue ports and you can also do cap sh print so it will look for the what all capabilities are there and uh, similarly so this is kind of pretty useful tool the hacker container and also it has nikto and a bunch of other use cases i think um, maybe i try to not document it here so i am going to try to see what can i kind of create out of it and how i use in day to day uh, while exploiting and uh, some use cases i would say is uh, very useful is uh, running benchmarks if you are uh, inside a clusters and you want to just get a glance of view what kind of vulnerabilities possibly there uh, within the kubernetes clusters both in terms of container runtime as well as a cluster level you can run these uh, cas benchmarks like one is you can just go ahead and run this command let's go ahead and run yep so what it does is it i have created something called daemon set which means each node how many ever nodes you have in the cluster will get one pod running in all the nodes that is called a daemon set in kubernetes let's go ahead and get the node so you can see two nodes are available now you should be able to see two pods running in the the docker bench because there are two nodes because we are running a daemon set right so you can see two pods running so let's go ahead and uh, exec into one of the the pod and uh, see what we can do with the docker bench security right so docker bench security i'm executing into the pod now you can see docker bench security now you can go ahead and run docker bench security dot search this is also part of a hacker container you can go ahead and run this so you the way i have set it up the sorry uh, the scenario manifest is if you can see here i have created the the docker bench security in such a way it access the host pid ipc network as well as a bunch of volumes and it also ex had extra capability called audit control so that you can access and talk to your underlying docker container runtime and you can perform benchmark analysis on uh, possible security issues right so this is a pretty uh, simple utility just go ahead and run this uh, once you are inside cluster then you will get at least high level posture and use the whatever the found vulnerabilities or uh, the checks uh, as uh, uh, attack paths or you can use those uh, while you are doing assessments or post exploitation right uh, once you are inside a node maybe you can use some kind of vulnerability which is detected here to do some kind of post exploitation right so you can see it does a bunch of checks like uh, host level configuration checks and uh, specific to like docker daemon or like directories and uh, daemon configuration and as well as the the files which is uh, specific to the container runtime here in this case docker and also container images whether container running with a root privilege or it has any extra capability set or it doesn't have any uh, seccom or app armor profiles uh, these kind of things right similarly you can go ahead and run the the cube bench as well so you can go ahead and run this cube bench like this let me go ahead and run here only i think it's, it's kind of taking quite a lot of time let me go back so you can see cube bench i have run you can go it pods the cube bench is running here you can get the logs iphone f and the bench so it will show you can see there are 12 checks passed nine checks failed and two checks warning so you can see what all the vulnerabilities possibly there in this kubernetes cluster and uh, what would be the remediations so you can use these vulnerabilities maybe to do further exploitation and understand uh, what you can do right so these tools are very useful just to get a glance of it and uh, there are bunch of utilities out there as well like uh, cube hunter and uh, cube sec audit and uh, uh, the the different uh, golang tool written by different researchers and i'll try to document and uh, put it in the same scenarios hopefully you can go back and try out yourself right cool so there are a bunch of other scenarios uh, due to the time constraint i couldn't uh, complete or showcase you but uh, feel free to go and uh, check out the kubernetes uh, goat project 
and uh, you should be able to get and uh, follow using uh, that the, the playground of that uh, katakoda right and if you have set it up in your own uh, environment like in our case right my case so you can go ahead and tear down the cluster basically it will try to delete uh, possibly resources which i have created as part of the, the kubernetes code deployment but i highly recommend you delete the cluster uh, to just ensure uh, clean up of the, the entire environment right and uh, i have also showcased uh, and run using a tool called checko to see what all possible vulnerabilities uh, using a, a ca cd as part of pipeline so it found bunch of vulnerabilities in the in the deployments and other things uh, which i have used uh, as part of kubernetes code as well right cool so that's it pretty much about it and uh, i would highly recommend uh, uh, having your feedback and understand what exactly uh, you wanted to look forward and uh, i'm really looking forward to building more and more scenarios and uh, also adding the different scenario i'm really building like most of the scenarios and making them in such a way that how you can practice for the the cnc of continue, uh, kubernetes certified kubernetes security so you can use this playground to practice and understand how uh, most of the kubernetes vulnerabilities you can assess and uh, learn more about it so feel free to get involved and uh, you can please feel free to provide the feedback and share with your colleagues teammates or uh, your friends uh, i would really appreciate if you can share the feedback and uh, i would love to improve and uh, work on it and uh, if you see any documentation or uh, anything is need to be improved please let me know by uh, github issues and uh, i'm trying to be pretty active but uh, in the past month i was a little busy so i kind of work on this uh, working on uh, different scenarios as well hopefully we will be releasing this month uh, for the different scenarios to understand and fix the vulnerabilities which you have learned uh, while practicing this uh, attacks and also more uh, attacker scenarios as well right and uh, with that i think uh, i am pretty much done with the the session thank you so much once again uh, for having me and uh, really looking forward awesome thank you so much it was an amazing presentation i learned so much and as a matter of fact in this court uh, there are a lot of people actually talking about your presentation and and uh, you know once again thank you for supporting the communities thank you for supporting the defcon red team village uh, we're going to go in a little break but we invite everybody that will have any further questions and so on to join the discord channel which is in the description of the